So, Bitcoin mining. I'm Abdul Tif Al Jazeera. I've been a miner for a very, very long time. Uh, started just playing around back in college, 2010. I've been uh, started moving to um, larger and larger scale since I got back in 2012 and until today. Um, so, what is Bitcoin mining? Um, I know it's be like. What is mining? How does it work? How do you get those coins? How are they generated on the platform, on the system? They're not just like magically there. There are two different types of, well, in some, in some cases, some certain coins, there are pre-mined coins, for example, like Stellar and Ripple. But in other cases, the, the, the initial batch of coins that came out, like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, those have to be mined by uh, specific hardware or very powerful computing units. Now, Bitcoin mining is a process in which trans transactions on the, uh, on the chain are verified, and the transactions are uh, verified and added to the public ledger, which is known as the blockchain. This also means, uh, this also the means through which uh, coins are created. So mining is the process uh, in uh, which, you, uh, which you have to answer for a challenge. Now, uh, a ch a ch this kind of challenge is difficult to prove but easy to verify. An example would be um, a lock, key lock. Can you guess the correct combination? It's very difficult to guess the correct combination to a key lock, but if you know it, if you can prove it, you can easily verify it by unlocking it. Let's say you have a key lock with a combination of four zeros, right? It's difficult to prove to get to those four zeros, but when you have the answer, you can easily verify it. So what happens is now when a miner, for example, gets the proof, it is then verified by the remaining uh, miners on the, on the network. So they re receive that answer, they check it against the, uh, the chain, and then yes, that is the correct answer. Then this miner that got the answer is rewarded. Now, this is known as the block reward. Now, the block reward is different for each and every coin and changes over time. This is based on um, the numbered amount, and this usually halves every few years. Now, I think we're at 12.5 Bitcoins per block reward. Um, so, yeah. This process is known as proof of work. Now, when it comes to uh, cryptos, there's proof of work and proof of stake. I'll talk about proof of stake later on um, in this discussion because it's very not nice. <laughs> so let's talk about pools. Now when you mine, there's different types of mining. Now when it first started, when people were mining back in 2010, 2011, people first started mining, they were mining from on their own systems using what's known as solo mining. Now solo mining is when you have a machine, you, you, you point at the network and it mines, and if it guesses the uh, correct answer, because what, what mining is, is is brute force. It's checking um, uh, combinations over and over and over again until it gets to the correct answer, then it pushes that, then it's verified, and then yes, here you go, here's your reward. Now, this is an extremely uh, difficult task on miners. Um, so, pool mining emerged when the difficulty uh, hit a certain amount, and this is, uh, well, this is a complexity. So, Powerful computers run sophisticated hashing algorithms through software to solve a challenge. Over time, as more computers get on the network, this causes the complexity to inc of the challenge to increase, thus requiring more powerful mining hardware. Now, the evolution of mining. Well, when, when mining, when cryptos first came around, well, it was Bitcoin and Litecoin and Novocoin and Feathercoin and all those coins, but let's talk about Bitcoin, let's focus on Bitcoin. When it first came onto the scene, we started with CPU mining. I'm gonna pull up my props, excuse me. For those that don't know, this is a CPU, right? Usually, when it first started, people were mining on these, on CPUs. Now, CPUs can do a lot of things at one time, but they're not very good at doing it one thing only. So mining, it was basically brute forcing and hashing an algorithm to get to the, the proof, the proof to the challenge, right? 
but these are not meant for that. At the beginning, when the complexity was low, it was easy, boom, easy, boom, 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 finished, finished. Then we move to GPU mining. This is a very old GPU. I've been using it for a very long time, so it's dusty and nasty, so excuse me. Uh, this is a graphical processing unit. These were, um, this became the norm around the 2011-2012 period when um, the complexity got to a point where CPU mining was no longer profitable when you were burning a lot of power and not getting uh, enough return. So people moved to GPU mining. Until this day, uh, you can still, the good thing about GPU mining is that you can recycle hardware and keep using it. This is a fully functioning GPU. I'm gonna put this back into my rig. I bought this back in 2013 and it's still running. Moved it from Litecoin to Feather to Ethereum, Zcash, etc. Then they moved to what's known as FPGA. What is this? That's a field programmable um, gate array. FPGAs are kind of like uh, chips that can do a lot of few things. They're usually found in TVs and projectors in, 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 in industry. So they were programmed to mine. And these were useful for a short amount of period. Maybe they ran for like a year um, and that was it. And Dash. Up until last year, uh, Dash mining was run on FPGAs until ASICs were produced. Now, what is an ASIC? Now, this is interesting. ASICs are application-specific integrated circuits. These are chips that do one thing and one thing only, and they are very, very good at doing it. So, for example, when it comes to Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin uses an algorithm known as SHA-256. Now, SHA-256, when you use it on an ASIC, you can, when you purchase an ASIC like an S9 or an S4, this is an ASIC. The little chips, these are all ASICs. Now, these can only do one thing and one thing only. So when it comes to ASICs, you can't, let's say, hey, I wanna buy a miner that does Bitcoin, and then when it comes useless, I'm gonna switch it over to Litecoin. Does that work? It doesn't work. Um, ASICs are built to solve for a particular algorithm. This solves SHA-256. For Litecoin, you need something known as a script miner. For Ethereum, Ethereum is built on the ET hash, and for something like uh, Zcoin or Zcash, that's run on Equihash. So all of those different coins, they have particular algorithms that have certain software and, and have certain requirements. Now, as time passed, companies started creating and innovating. Now, this is a, a board from an S4, and S4 came like back in 2013. This is useless. The bubble wrap is more expensive than the, than the board right now. It's pointless. There's no point in having it. But that's the thing. Now, this is all e-waste. Think about how many miners are being built year over year over year. And when they're done, they're done. You just throw it out, it's finished. There's no point in running it. That's where GPUs have the advantage. Now, I've, my first batch of GPUs, I'm still using till today. Because you can, you can recycle them. They're built on, on, on PCs, so you can then switch the algorithm to another one because the CPU and the operating system is handling the algorithm coming in. The GPU is just processing that data. So why mining? What is, what is the importance of mining? Mining is important because it maintains the network to verify transactions, and without miners, the ecosystem will collapse. The platform will collapse. You, if all the, Bitcoin, all the Bitcoin miners around the world shut down, Bitcoin, boom, finished. So all your money is gonna be useless if that happens. So you need me, you need me, you need me. <laughs> Pay me. <laughs> Now, companies are now offering, now there are things out that are called, um, there's two, diff there, you can either mine at home, if you're running a small scale mining setup of one mine or two miners, let's say maximum five, six, seven, that's fine. You're not gonna be consuming that much power, you're not gonna be producing that much heat. But if you're gonna be scaling up to 10, 15, 20, or let's say you live in an apartment and you don't have space to put your miner, you, there are companies that offer cloud mining uh, setups. Those are nice but they can be more expensive for large-scale miners. You have companies like um, Genesis Mining, 
where you could just go on there, you pay them an amount, they do the all, they do the mining for you, and then you just get paid out to your wallet. Is this good? Yes. Is this bad? Yes. Why is it good? It's good because you don't have to do any work. It's done for you. It's bad because you pay, you pay a premium, which is their maintenance fees, as well as the premium on the, on the machine itself. So, we have coins like Ethereum that are ASIC proof. ASIC proof is not a thing. You cannot create an algorithm that is ASIC proof. It, it is economically non-viable. It can be economically non-viable to do, put in the research and development to create that ASIC at a given coin price. Like for example, um, Ethereum, to not even like a year, year and a half ago, it was worth $8 a coin. Today, it's like $700. Bitmain, they just released their E3 miner, which is an Ethereum miner. This miner can mine 100, 180 mega hashes per second. Now, does this make sense today? Sure. Did it make sense back then? No. These algorithms are known to be uh, memory, hard, uh, memory hard algorithms where you would requ require a lot of enemy enemy, oh my goodness, memory, a lot of system memory and memory bandwidth to solve. This is where the DAG size comes in when, it, when we're talking about Ethereum. Now the DAG size, you have to, certain GPUs right now, you can use GPUs to mine Ethereum, but at this point, you need a minimum of 3.5 gigabytes of GPU memory to be mining Ethereum. Now, this is why these ASICs, they do not have memory on board. So what companies like Bitmain did, they integrated the memory controller onto the main controller hub of the miner, which then grabs the data from the internet, pro uh, processes it, and then puts it into the ASIC for it to be computed, and then the, the proof is sent to the controller, the controller sends it back up. That's how those units work. But these, they're relatively dumb. The data comes into the controller, controller sends it to the ASIC, ASIC sends it back up. Easy. But this uh, is a completely new um, scope of delivery for um, ASICs, and this had to be, a lot of money had to be put into this, and th this is why it's just starting to merge right now, because the price of the coins shut up. Okay, now proof of stake. What does that mean? We just spoke about proof of work. Mining is proof of work. Proof of stake is where you stake the amount of coins that you have. Uh, so let's say um, you have a thousand bitcoins. That gives you stake in the, uh, on the blockchain. So the more coins that I have, the more power I have on, on, on the network. So the more voting power and influence that you have on the network. Hard, uh, hardware miners only get transaction fees. Only when somebody clicks transaction, you are paid out in transaction fees. The less miners, uh, uh, the less miners on the network are susceptible to a 51% attack. So as we, as we hit our maximum of, I think, 22, 23 million Bitcoins, now, these miners are not going to be paid out because there's no more blocks. There's no more block rewards. So they're just going to be paid out via the, transfer, uh, the transaction phase. Now, this isn't economically viable, so more and more miners are going to be shutting down. Now, if somebody ha owns a large amount of miners, and let's say he can do a 51% attack, what a 51% attack is, he can create fraudulent bl uh, blocks of transactions for himself, invalidating transactions of others in the network. This is a big problem. But, see, I don't like proof of stake, but I understand why they're doing it. Um, will this happen? Sure. Will it happen now? No. Will, there, will they remedy it? Will there be a hard fork? Maybe. But we don't know. Uh, but the, fi the, the pr proof of stake is where everybody's moving towards. There are hybrid solutions by, from companies like NXT that have a hybrid proof of work, proof of stake set up in place right now, but I mean, the, the whole crypto setup right now, the crypto world is very young, even though it's like eight years, nine years, but it's, it's young. Now, we're gonna get into a bit more detail and depth and little scary words. Now, currently, there's about, I would say, eight ASIC companies. Bitmain, Avalon, Baykal, InnoSilicon, Bitfury, What's Miner, eBank, and How Long, Miner. Now, the largest player by far is Bitmain. Bitmain, they create Bitcoin miners, Litecoin miners, Dash miners, Kryptonite miners, Ethereum miners. Um, what am I missing? I think I covered them. I think that's it.
Oh, and Sia coin miners. Um, they're currently running um, on, uh, the, their chips are currently being pr uh, produced by a company known as TSMC, that is uh, Taiwan semi, uh, Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. These are called chip fabricators. Now, this is where it gets a little scary. Now, the whole point of mining is to verify these transactions. And if you're not gonna get paid out something worthwhile, you're not gonna be, you're not gonna be mining. So efficiency, this is where efficiency comes in. Now, the more efficient your miner is, the more efficient your setup is, the more coins that you're gonna generate at a lower uh, cost. Now, this is where the race to seven nanometer comes in. Seven nanometer means the, 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 the distance between the transistors within the chip itself. So in the chip, in these ASICs and within any chip, there are transistors, small, small transistors which the switch on and off. The space between them tells you how many there could be in a, in a package. Now, as you, sh as you shrink the die, the transistor size, that means you can fit more transistors in a smaller die, hence more hashing power, less power consumption. Now, companies like GMO, uh, Internet, Mar uh, Internet and uh, Communications Company, Japanese-based, stepped into the game, and they're currently working on creating a 7 nanometer um, um, ASIC, rivaling uh, Samsung's 14 nanometer and the TSMC's 16 nanometer chip. They've already been successful at creating their 10 nanometer chip, but they haven't released that to the public. Right now, the Bitmain is, uh, is on the 16 nanometer node, where Inner Silicon and the Helong the, uh, are on 14 nanometer. Uh, Inner Silicon running on um, Global Foundries and Helong using Samsung chips, and Ebang on 10 nanometer chips. So the smaller the distance between the transistors, the more you can mine, the less power you use. Now we're gonna talk about the economics of mining. Now where's my paper? Fancy like that. Okay, so the economics of mining. Why should you be mining? What's, how is it profitable? How could you, why should you be doing it? Now, uh, a few factors come in when, it's, when it comes to mining. Um, efficiency, cooling, power, power consumption and power price, and location. Now, believe it or not, Kuwait is the best place to mine because power is very, very, very cheap. Um, to mine in Kuwait, to give an example, the cost of electricity is around 0.67 cents, where in the United States it averages between 7 to 13 based on where you are, and around the world between 7 to 20. So you mine here, and you make a lot of money. Um, what, it co what comes into play is not only uh, the cost of of, of power, but how are you going to cool it? Because we live in a very, very hot country, so what do you do? You build it underground, right? Then you don't have to deal with that. So the whole eco economic side of it is you have to look at how much it costs you per kilowatt hour of uh, system usage. For example, a Litecoin miner which uses script generates about 504 mega hashes using they say 800, but it uses 770. So those 30 watts are very important because then you can you scale them up and you can build more and more. So it makes sense. I know I'm not being a stickler. So your total cost in with rent, power, manpower is 1.7 cents per kilowatt hour, where just power anywhere else around the world averages between 7 to 20 cents. Simple math, honestly, I don't know. I don't know what to say. So, to give you an example, let's say you're running a mine with 500 miners, right? 500 miners, um, uh, the cost, the, the power cost, your annual power cost is gonna be around 24,000 KD. My annual rent cost is about 24,000 KD as well. Now, my miner cost is about one, uh, 150,000 KD, 125,000 KD. Now, my monthly return, of course, this is going to change based on um, the price of the coin and the difficulty, but at current rates, I'm, I'll be generating 20,000 KD per month from 500 miners. Now, over the course of the year, this translates to 240,000 Kuwaiti dinars, right? With my all-in cost, my entire cost, rent, 
power and staff is about 60,000 KD. So you're generating a profit, an annual profit, forget the an initial cost of machinery of 180,000 KD. Now deducting the, uh, the cost of machinery, you're making a pure profit of 55 or 56,000 Kuwaiti dinars per year, right? And keep in mind that you still have that hardware that you already paid for and that is still operating for the next two to three years, assuming that you can maintain your setup and you know what you're doing. So you cover your expenses, your annual expenses, your, your, your hardware expenses in eight months, in your first eight months, and then on your second fiscal year, you cover your rent in your first two to three months, and you're running pure profit. Now, again, I'm assuming today's prices, today's difficulty, and this changes accordingly. Now, um, isn't it cheaper to just buy coins? Should I just buy the coin and just leave it and not deal with building a mine and doing all of this and pay rent and liquidation and all this? Why? Why am I going to go through that headache? I will tell you why, because I know. Okay. So I'll give you an example. When I first started mining here, uh, when I came back around 2012, 2013, I spent 5,000, 6,000 KD. I bought a few GPUs. It, back then, it was just it was a, it was a game, right? People didn't know. You know, I just graduated college. Right. So um, I built my mine rig in my living room, and then I started setting it up, setting it up. Those, that 5,000 KD investment bought me around I don't know, 60 GPUs that generated in the, in the first two years about 3,000 Litecoin, right? The good thing about it, then I shifted, when it became too difficult to mine Litecoin, I shifted to Ethereum, and that generated 1,500 Ethereum. And now I'm still mining Ethereum. So my initial, let's say $20,000 investment generated from Litecoin half a million dollars and from Ethereum $1 million. So we're all in about $1.5 to $1.6 million from a $20,000 investment. Now, it's not going to work the same for you. I got lucky because I'm smart, okay? And I jumped in really, really early, right? So, <laughs> so it's not, not saying it's going to happen to you, but you never know, right? It's all based because back then, the price of Litecoin was at $2 a pop. If I had liquidated back then 3,000 Litecoins at $2 a pop, that's $6,000, I would have made a loss. Right? And Ethereum was at um, $8, $8 a coin, at 1,500 coins that you're talking about, what, uh, $12,000, $12,000. That entire investment, that would have been, if I had liquidated at that point, okay, I would have made my $20,000. But you hold, and you wait, and you hope, and you pray, and you make a lot of money in return. And that's how it works. Um, so yeah, mining, just a quick overview. Um, questions? Concerns, comments, remarks? Why would anyone be the first one mining Bitcoin? Yeah. I'm not, you, you said you came into the, into the game in 2010. Oh. Bitcoin already had a price, but I'm wondering who were the first ones and why would you do, why, why, did, you, why did they do that? That's the first question. Wait a second. Let me go here with, with the second one. Um, so we are, we are moving towards, uh, well, still a long time ahead, but uh, we're, we're, Bitcoins are going to be mined entirely. And I, can we can we shift from uh, proof of work to proof of stake with Bitcoin? That can can that happen? That's that's, that's not in the works. That's not going to happen. That's not a thing. No. That's Ethereum, probably what they they they, they said they were going to implement it in 2015, 2016. Right. Uh, I don't see it happening anytime right. soon. So to be honest. With, with Bitcoin, with Bitcoin is going to be always proof of proof, proof of, of work. work. Yes. All right. So yeah. once once the miners, uh, because now you're a miner, so you are part and of forever. The, <laughs> now you're part of the sustainability of the ecosystem, so uh, you have the responsibility of maintaining the ecosystem, if you want, obviously, but you have started. Now, once the Bitcoins are mined, then probably you won't be alive uh, by that time, but when that happens, uh, what is going to be the incentive of the miners to still uh, to be maintaining the, 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 the ecosystem? 
Well, well, it comes down to it. Do you have one? If, do you have one more question, or is that it? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. What was the first one? I forgot the first one. <laughs> The first, the first one, one was uh, about uh, what my incentive to. Yeah. Uh, because I'm a huge nerd, <laughs> there was no monetary gain. I didn't care about the money because I loved it. I thought, I thought, okay, this gives me um, power over my assets. It's my money. It's my coin. Nobody's taking it away from me, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it was something new, something insane. I had read the original white paper. I was like, okay, all right, makes sense. And then I just started doing it. I had, I was. Uh, I went to school for electro engineering. There's a lot of comp empty computer labs. There's a lot of unused computers. You just load up the software and let it run, and you let it do its thing, and it mines. So okay, then I started implementing it at a, at, a, at, a, at a larger scale. You know, just do it and see what happens. And I did, and uh, this happened. Yeah. I didn't think this would happen a, y a year ago. Nobody thought this would happen, but it did. Um, Good for you. I didn't do it for monetary gain. And I still don't do it for monetary gain. I have barely liquidated. Um, I did spend four bitcoins on light bulbs, the most expensive light bulbs I've ever bought. 20 light bulbs for four bitcoins, and I will hate myself forever for it. Um, so yeah, that was my only purchase. Uh, but I do it for the sake of doing it, and because I enjoy it, because it's a challenge, it's a task, you get to learn a lot. You learn a lot. There's a lot of trial and error, there's a lot of failure. When I built my first, I wouldn't call it large scale, uh, when I first started, I started with eight miners, right? Here, I'm talking here. I started with eight miners, then that became 12, and that became 65. So when I got to 65 miners, um, I was building uh, those S4s, they're like giant racks. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, I literally had to install jet engines out of our house to pull the air out fast enough because each miner uses about 1,400 watts, and you have 50 of those in one room. My room was four by three. So you're talking about almost 70,000 watts in an area that is four by three. A lot of heat was being generated. And I, I, I suffered a lot. Things melted, things blew up. But I did it because I believed in the ecosystem. I believed in the, co in the, in the, in the idea, in the freedom, in the, in the coins. I, I just, uh, I, I, I'm a believer. That's it, I have, I have no, monetary gain out of it right now. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, now, with that same answer, the, the answer to the second one, what is going to encourage you to maintain, to be part of the network and maintain the network when you don't, on, you are not going to, not only get a reward from it, but it's okay. going to cost you a lot of money because this is going, is going to be the case. The more we go into the future, the more expensive it's going to be to mine, the more energy you will require, and the less the reward is going to be and especially with the big players, uh, the big well, pools working on it. Well, well, here's the thing, right? When, um, so after the last Bitcoin is mined, we said the miners are just gonna get the transaction fees. Now, there's always be a point where it'll still be profitable, else nobody will be on these networks. Now, you need to maintain the network to maintain, um, to keep it up and running. So you're just talking about that, those transaction fees, they're just gonna be spread around to a smaller group of people. Right, because they're going to be shutting down their miners. It's not profitable for anymore. I don't care for it. I'm going to move on. Right, but it'll still be profitable for me. Do I do it because it's profitable? Because it's profitable? No, I'm going to do it because I like doing it. Because I enjoy. It. Here, this conference covered, spoke a lot about the the economic side of it and the blockchain and stuff. I'm, I don't care about money. I don't care about the economic gain. I can I care about that it's cool. It is so cool. If you ever walk into a mine. It will blow your mind. You can come check mine out. It's like, it's insane. <laughs> yeah, it's just, people walk in, it's like, wow. It's just, yeah, it's just, it's just cool. That, Why not? That's great. And yeah. <laughs> I, appre I appreciate the interest in, on all this and the technology mm. and all that. I appreciate it. But mm. you cannot just get rid of the economic factor because if, if you don't have a distributed, a mm -hmm. distributed, a pool system where a lot of people in the game, as you said, you mm. get to the 51% and the network is owned by someone. Mm. And if that happens, that and not having a network is the same thing. Yes, I get what you're saying. It's for when you get to that point when most of the miners are going to be shutting down, there's only going to be a few that are, 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 that are probably here, to be honest, because it's so cheap to run, I for it to be profitable to get the 51%. Um, I get what you're saying when proof of work, proof of stake, and all of that. Honestly, 
To be frank, only time will tell. Uh, you never know what's going to happen at that point. At that point, we're still years and years and years away from that happening. But I don't think that we'll get to a point where there's going to be a 51% holder um, just because uh, the, the, diversity, the diversity of uh, miners and locations and the coins themselves, there's these, these miners, they're going to switch to different coins. Like, here's the thing. When you're looking at just Bitcoin, right, mine is still going to be a thing forever because there are many, many different kinds of coins. I mine Bitcoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Dash, Monero, Ethereum, Pascal, Decred, and Sia. There's plenty of coins. Something goes, new thing comes. I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's thank it. you. <laughs> okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you for the overview. Sure. Um, I have four questions. I'll be quick. Sure. <laughs> um, the first question, you took us through a logic flow of the breakdown of how uh, your economic cost and how you're profiting. Sure. But you didn't mention anything about uh, environmental costs, sustainability, uh, how it affects the electric grid. If we had, let's say, 10% of the Kuwait population mining at your scale, okay. this would dramatically um, have an effect on the environment as a whole yeah. and the centralized electric grid, which powers the decentralized blockchains, yeah. regardless of what you're mining. So environmental question, number one. Number okay. two, can you just briefly comment on TPUs, what okay. they are? and what's going to happen. Okay. And uh, question three, the risks of quantum computing, about the 51%. How, how would a quantum computer disrupt the entire chain, and the, or the, all the blockchains? Okay. And uh, question four, I've mined briefly, so logically, I, don't, I can't find a lot of people to agree with me. Since you're mining, you're buying, uh, let's say, uh, semiconductor equipment. Why would I mine if I could just invest in the IT companies or invest in the Thai companies that are manufactu manufacturing, like MSI, and profit off Moore's Law, since there's a trend? So could you, on uh, your, okay. your opinion on that, thank okay. you. Okay, your first question was about sustainability yes. and the environmental factors and all that. Well, there's, pl okay, I'm going to give you the, the emotional question and then I'll give you the scientific, uh, the emotional answer and then the scientific answer. The emotional question is like, there's always Mars, Right, that's plan B, we got that. Um, and you look at it this way, how many cars are on the road right now? Too many. Too many cars are on the road, right? The, em the environmental factor that those cars uh, are, are committing, right, is, is a thousand times more than the, the footprint of, of uh, mining equipment. A thousand, thousand times more. So when you say like, oh, all this mining, they're using so much power, they're generating, they're, they're, they're causing so much pollution. I mean, for us, the issue here is there's so much, there's so many problems when it comes to the environmental factors. You could just make uh, factories cleaner. For example, generate clean power, right? You, we have solar, you have hydro, right? We don't have to be burning oil to create power. The issue is not the power consumption, it's how the power is generated. The power is generated by burning oil, burning fossil fuels, you create pollution. My, my mind, when it's running, not creating pollution, it's not spitting out carbon monoxide. It isn't, it's generating heat, right? So it's not my problem, sorry. Um, the, your, your, other, the, your, the other question was uh, uh, about... TPUs. Uh, GPUs? TPUs. TPUs. It's too soon. It's too soon. Um, uh, there, there isn't like a single like solidly proven mass, uh, massively produced commercial TPU out there. So it, uh, right now we just don't know. And uh, the last one, uh, the quantum computer risk. Qu like, quantum uh, this could all go to zero tomorrow. If Again, that uh, quantum computers, that's something that is still an unknown as well. You only have, what, like two quantum computing companies, one in Canada and one working with Google and research, and they're too busy working on like actual things that matter, like space, um, to care about blockchain. I mean, sure, you could go and build a two, three, four, five million dollar supercomputer and let it focus on mining, but I don't think you're gonna make your money back. Um, so I don't think that that's an actual concern at this moment. And in regards to your final question about Moore's Law and investing in these semiconductor companies, well, here's the thing. We'll talk numbers, right? You, you can, when you see the growth, the, the growth, for example, the biggest, the biggest semiconductor company, the two largest semiconductor companies are 
TSMC, forget Intel and Samsung, TCMC, and then um, Global Foundries. Of course, Intel and Samsung are their own players. Uh, and those two semiconductor companies, T TSMC, uh, are at the 10 nanometer node, and Global Foundries are at 7 nanometer node. Samsung are about 10 nanometer node, and uh, Intel can't even reach 10 nanometers. They've been, they were supposed to launch their 10 nanometer node two years ago, and they're still being delayed. Now, if you were to invest your money in these semiconductor companies like um, TSMC or Global Foundries, well, you can check out their stocks and do the math yourself. The, uh, there isn't much there, to be honest. So it's, uh, it's a non-question. Thank you for the sure. technical reply. I got you. <laughs> Next. Well, you mean you, you mean yes? The, 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 yeah, the, yeah. It's not. It's uh, it, it's it's a waste. Well, here's the thing. Um, that's why GPUs are good because those are recyclable. ASICs, unless they generate, unless there's a coin, right, that uses the same algorithm that happens to be profitable, then you could use it. Like I can switch this to another SH eight two five six coin, and then maybe it'll be profitable. But no, not really. This is just waste. Unfortunately, however, there are equipment that come in in the ASIC that is recyclable, like the controller board, they, like the networking, the networking gear, like the power supply, like the fans. All those are recyclable. The chases, I mean, the the board itself, it's uh, it's trash. Yeah. Next. Okay. It's gonna be the last one. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. Sure. And uh, my question is regarding mining. If there was no Bitcoin, no Ethereum, no Zcash, okay. what other cryptocurrencies do you think are worth mining? Let me tell you something. I have confessed my love to Litecoin from day one. Litecoin. Litecoin. Okay. Mark my word. A thousand bucks. All right. Mark my word. Litecoin is, in all seriousness, Litecoin was supposed to be what Bitcoin Cash is today. But Bitcoin Cash came out of the, the fork, and that's what it is. Litecoin was made to be the, uh, uh, the, the faster, the, the cheaper alternative to Bitcoin. And Litecoin does everything that Litecoin, uh, uh, Bitcoin Cash does. It's running on the same Lightning uh, network. It has low transaction fees, and it's very quick. So I, if, 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 I, if, I, if I wasn't mining those other coins, I'd be mining, I'd be looking at Litecoin, I'd be looking at Monero. I'd be looking at um, uh, CL. Uh, not really. I have mining CL, but it's, uh, it's the, the, maybe Dash, 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 Monero, Litecoin. He said no Zcash. No, 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 no. We're not doing Zcash. We're not doing Ethereum, and we're not doing Bitcoin. So yeah, I'd be doing Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, uh, Dash, Monero. Yeah. Sure. Okay. We're good. All right, thank you.